So there's a theory going around the real estate industry that it's smarter to buy now at a higher interest rate rather than waiting till interest rates drop because buyers are gonna flood the market and demand's gonna be too high and it's gonna cost you more money in the long run. So let's find out if that's true. We're gonna compare a 7.25% interest rate now versus a 5% interest rate in the future. We gotta take this theory with a grain of salt because it's mostly becoming from people in the real estate industry and they are known to tell you that the best time to buy is always right now because it's in their vested interest. I'm gonna try and take all of my personal opinions, take them out of this conversation and tell you exactly what the numbers tell us. So we're gonna break down this scenario. I'm gonna go off of Los Angeles numbers. If you live in another market, this is still gonna be relevant to you. You can just tear it down to your market. Average home price in Los Angeles is a little bit under a million. I'm gonna make the math a little easier on myself and put it right at that million dollar mark. And let's assume somebody with a good profile, 740 credit score, 20% down. If you don't have 20% down, I never really advise people to buy a house. I think you should continue to save. Obviously there's FHA and other means you can go. You can certainly buy a house with less than a 740 credit score. Once again, I want you in the best position when you're gonna make this huge financial move. But that's the scenario we're playing with in both sides of it, keeping the same profile so we can see exactly what it is. 7.25% interest rate, which is about what the interest rate is on average right now, versus when sentiment gets better, which is probably around 5%, could be four and a half, but that's the two scenarios, right? The caveat over here is when interest rates are 5% and everybody floods back into the market, these homes will be selling for over the list price. So what is the number I'm going to use over here to even the scales out? If you look back to 2021 in Los Angeles, on average, on the east side, Silver Lake, Atwater, Glassell Park, Eagle Rock, the average home sale over list price was 107% for 2021. The reason I'm using 2021 is that's when rates were low and demand was crazy high. 107% is obviously the average over the year. Things were booming at the beginning. They slowed down through the end of the year. So I'm gonna take that number, use it as a kind of you know a stepping stone to where that number is gonna be when rates drop again, and we're gonna put it at 110%. What that means is this million dollar home that we're purchasing right now at 7.25%, when we buy it at 5% in 18 to 24 months, as far as the rates go, it's gonna be, you're gonna have to pay 1.1 million, right? And as far as when the rates get down to 5%, it's all speculative. You know, you talk to anybody who's in the financial market, they will tell you everything is just an estimation, it's just a guess. If somebody tells you they know when rates are coming down or you'll just refinance later, it's probably some BS. The reality, if I'm going to speculate myself, if you listen to people in the financial sector, in the business sector, when will rates get back down to 5% for mortgages? These are people who aren't in real estate, but are aware of the economics of it. The sentiment is probably not till at least the end of 2024, probably closer to 24 months, middle of 2025. So that's what the scenario we're gonna run off of. It could certainly be longer. It could be shorter, not likely. So here's how the breakdown goes. All right, so we got 7.25% interest rate. You got a 740 credit score, 20% down, million dollar home. It sells right at that list price, which is pretty common for Los Angeles and many areas right now. We are not adding insurance to this monthly payment. Obviously, insurance fluctuates and it's part of your monthly payment that you should be aware of and be, be prepared for. I'm also not putting in property taxes. Property taxes are very important. It will cost you thousands of dollars throughout the year. You should certainly be aware if you're worried about property taxes, move to Hawaii. They got the best, best property taxes in the country. California is 15th, I believe. Popular transition states like Florida is 23rd and Texas is 44th. Ouch. Uh, sorry to my friends and family back home. Illinois is 49th and New Jersey is the worst state in the country when it comes to property taxes, but you should be aware of property taxes. The numbers I'm gonna give you do not include those, but that doesn't really matter. I just don't want people freaking out when they say there's no way, or they had an expectation they were gonna pay this, and then they see property tax on their bill, and you know they're mad at me, which is crazy. Okay, 7.25% interest rate, 20% down, 740 credit score, $1 million house. Your monthly payment is going to be with no insurance and taxes, $5,457, give or take. Now, scenario two, 5% interest rate, flooded market with buyers. You've got to pay 110%, 10% over the list price. So you paid $1.1 million for the same house. Your monthly payment on that end, $4,724, give or take. 
meaning $700 for scenario B, less than, seven, than scenario A right now. $8,400 a year you will save on a monthly basis. If we put this number over here to 120%, meaning you pay $1.2 million for that house, that moves your monthly payment to $5,153. So we're still not at the 54, 57 of scenario A. The break even is right around 126%, meaning we're gonna take that million dollar home, you get your offer in and accept it at 1.26%. Zero million. That's kind of where you start breaking even on the monthly payment, but there's some caveats and some other aspects we have to take into account in this scenario. Nothing is cut and dry as that, right? First of all, if you go scenario A, this is very important and you buy right now, you have to take into account the fact that that two years you're into your monthly payment, meaning you bought down your 30 year mortgage two years and you gained equity on your home. Anybody who's familiar with the loan process, specifically the mortgage loan process, you should be aware that your early payments are mostly interest, meaning million dollar home, 7.25% interest rate. You pay two years of payments at 54, 57 every single month. You will only pay down your loan around $17,000. That is wild, right? You're paying five grand plus a month. You're only getting 17K on the equity over those two year loans off of the principal loan balance of 800K, right? We put the 20% down, 200K, 800K goes down 17K, you know, to 1783, 783. And if you factor in $8,400 a year that you're gonna pay less, if you wait, that's kind of a break even. There's a huge factor in the A scenario that makes it all worthwhile and you have to be aware of this and that is appreciation of a home. So you buy the house million dollar home on this side of the spectrum. And over time, it appreciates over those two years, you should gain value. This is very, this is where you need to be working with an agent who is in tune with the financial sector, knows who the frick J Jerome Powell is, pays attention to the markets, is not just somebody who knows what curtains are pretty, right? Because if your homes are depreciated, we see in San Francisco, Austin, areas in Arizona where homes are losing value, meaning you're not going to get any appreciation, certainly this year, certainly over the next two years. So this scenario is mute for markets that are falling. Los Angeles is not that scenario because we have an inventory issue. I'll touch base on that more here in just a second. But let's assume you do get normal appreciation on your house. So in Los Angeles, 40 year average, about 6.7% appreciation per year is what you see on your home. Not gonna get to 6.7 this year. We know that because we're already halfway through the year. Let's assume 6%. Let's be generous in this conversation to really boost up scenario A here and say that you do get 6% appreciation over the next two years off that house. So you buy the house now, million dollars, you get 6% over the next year. So now this home, just based off that, is worth 1,060K, right? Now you take the 1,060K, you get 6% more. Now we're just over 1.123 million, right? So you've gained 123K plus in appreciation. So you've got to factor that in. That's a ton of value. That is six figures that you could gain in equity on your home in this scenario. Will you get to that? We'll see. We might not see great appreciation until rates start to drop, but that in, in some essences, especially in a popular area like Los Angeles, in a good market, and you get that appreciation, you have to take that into account. Get yourself along in the process. Let's, let's talk about two more things and I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? Because these are important. First scenario we have, you have a million dollar house. Let's say you see your dream home in Hollywood. I hope your dream home is in Hollywood, unless it's in Largemont, best spot in the city. All right, so you got your dream home and it's worth a million dollars. And let's assume the market's pretty normal over the next two years and we do see the appreciation of 6%. That means that same house that you want, if you wait till the interest rates are at 5% in two years, that house will have appreciated 6% each year, right? So now that house is worth 1.123, right? So it's worth 123,000 more. So that's what you're gonna have to pay if you buy it at list price. But like we said, in this 5% scenario, we have the buyer demand flooding the market. So we gotta go to that 110% mark again, right? Because you're gonna have to pay over the list price. So you have a house worth 1.123 at 110% clip you're paying 1.235 plus. 
So that's what we got, 5% interest rate, 1.235, 960 is the exact number. What's your monthly payment gonna look like there? 5,307, so still $150 less than the initial 7.25 on that million dollar home. So what that means is you're gonna have to anticipate that you're not gonna have major savings if you want that same quality home in that school district, in that neighborhood. It might push you out to lose some of those tangibles to the home that you're looking at if you stay right at a million and start looking at million dollar homes because a million dollar home in 2025 is typically different than a million dollar home in 2023. Final scope to this, and I'm gonna get you out of here, I promise, but this one's important. So when we get down to 5% interest rates, people are gonna flood the market. The biggest issue here in Los Angeles, in every, any market that's doing well, in most markets generally is inventory, right? The reason why that is, is because 82 plus percent of people that own a home right now have an interest rate at 5% or lower. 62% of those are below 4%. 23 plus percent of those are under 3%. If you are fortunate to have under 3%, we will probably never see that again. Most likely you should probably never sell that home, even if you're moving on to a new place. I know it's a headache, it's a whole nother video, but rents are not dropping, so you might wanna just rent it out and continue to build the equity. That's a whole nother conversation. But that's what's hedging most of the homes from coming on the market. There's obviously other things that are factoring in but you're not gonna go out and sell your home right now if you have a 4% interest rate when rates are 7%, because that's a huge risk, because you gotta get back into another house. But if interest rates get down to 5% in 24 months, and buyers start flooding the market, and we see that one month jump of 125% over list price, or 130% list price, that's gonna incentivize the sellers to be like, all right, now's the time to make that move that I wanted to make over the past four, five, two years, whatever it is. And essentially that's where scenario B kind of falls apart, simple supply and demand, because if more buyers come in and we start to see sellers try to jump on those profits and make a move that they've been wanting to make for a couple of years, and then it evens out the scale of supply and demand in some essence, then we won't see homes going with crazy multiple bids. That's very speculative, but it's something you should, could be aware of for the scenario. Ideally, that's kind of what happens, right? If, we're, if I'm being realistic about it, rates go to 5%, buyers flood it, houses are going crazy, people are paying cash, paying 40% over list price, sellers jump back in, and then the market kind of tears off and we settle down and we get back to normal. The last caveat here is will rates drop? That's huge. No one knows. If you look back historically, sometimes interest rates don't drop for a decade. That's probably not going to happen now, but it could. So you're really banking on some speculative aspects of rates even getting down in two years, which they may or may not. I expect that they would, but that's, that's just a generalized guess. So the bottom line is this, and this is my advice to you, is you shouldn't really be timing the market. You know, I kind of live by the Warren Buffett school of, of economics where you have to diversify, take acclimated risk. You know, he always does say, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And the sentiment generally in the market is fearful right now, even though consumer spending isn't reflecting that. But there are deals out there. I do monthly breakdowns of every neighborhood on the east side, Silver Lake, Highland Park, Atwater, Lincoln Heights, El Sereno, all of them. And I see deals and I see opportunities out there. My advice, reach out to a broker, reach out to an agent, reach out to a lender, people who have your best interests at hand, people who are tied to the financial market of things, someone who's gonna give you good advice. If you call an agent and say, hey, we're probably looking to buy a house when rates come back down to 5% in two years, I just wanted to get in contact with you so we can start kind of looking, start getting prepared. If they tell you, call me back in 24 months, get a new agent, straight up. So, be smart out there, get connected to people in the industry who can help you make the best decision for you. If you're in the position to buy a home, you are blessed, you are lucky. Take this advice, I hope it was helpful. This is All Things LA Real Estate. I am PK Noel, like and subscribe if you are so inclined. Have a wonderful day, be kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm.